Good morning and welcome again back to Trinity as we once again do our worship services here online uh, as we still are in the lockdown period that uh, we have here in Michigan. But we are very thankful that we do have this ability to uh, worship with you and your homes and to share God's word with you. Our service is a, a special abbreviated service, um, as you will see posted there online. But also remember, we're still in the season of Easter. It's hard to believe that just last Sunday was Easter Sunday. Uh, it seems like a long time ago. But yet the joy and the hope that we have is rooted in knowing that Christ our Lord is risen. And that's the focus of our worship this morning, as we rejoice again in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. We'll begin by singing our first hymn, Hymn number 158, I am content, my Jesus lives again. We begin our worship service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. 
and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and the grave and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that we may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us, that we may live for you. Amen. Amen. Our first reading for this Sunday, the first Sunday after Easter, is found in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 14, and then verses 22 through 32. This portion of God's word find the disciples there on the day of Pentecost, and after being filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter stood up with the eleven and began to share with the people there in Jerusalem the wonderful news about Christ, and that he is the promised Messiah. And better yet, he is also the risen Lord who has delivered salvation to them and all people. We read. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and spoke loudly and clearly to them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man recommended to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, who was handed over by God's set plan and foreknowledge, you killed by having lawless men nail him to a cross. He is the one God raised up by freeing him from the agony of death, because death was not able to hold him in its grip. Indeed, David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also rest in hope, because you will not abandon my life to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Gentlemen, brothers, I can speak confidently to you about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, 
and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath that he would seat one of his descendants on his throne, he saw what was coming and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, saying that he was neither abandoned to the grave, nor did his flesh see decay. This Jesus is the one God has raised up. We are all witnesses of that. This is God's word. We'll join now in singing Psalm 16, a psalm that is, finds joy in knowing as David was given the promise of our Lord's resurrection, Psalm 16. second reading this morning is found recorded in the first letter that Peter wrote to the church there in, well, basically in Asia Minor. And he reminds them that our hope that we have in life, even in the face of the most difficult of times, is in the promise of the resurrection that we have through our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. We read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he gave us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that is undying, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Through faith, you are being protected by God's power for the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Because of this, you rejoice very much even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various kinds of trials, so that the proven character of your faith, which is more valuable than gold, which passes away even though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, Yet by believing in him, you are filled with a joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is God's word. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. 
Alleluia. I invite you now, out of respect for the gospel, to stand for our gospel reading as it's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Glory, Glory be to you, you, O Lord. Our gospel reading this morning is also the basis for our sermon, and it is the account of Jesus appearing to his disciples on two different occasions. The first was the night of the day of his resurrection, and the second one was one week later. On the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together behind locked doors because of their fear of the Jews. Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. Whenever you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. But Thomas, one of the twelve, the one called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger into the mark of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. After eight days, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Take your hand and put it into my side. Do not continue to doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus, in the presence of his disciples, did many other miraculous signs that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We'll now join in singing our next hymn, Hymn 165, O Sons and Daughters of the King.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. As I mentioned, the words for our sermon this morning are in our gospel reading. We have heard those words, so we'll dispense with reading them again. Have you ever been afraid? Kind of a silly question, isn't it? Because really, when you think about it, who of us has never been afraid? There's, there's always something that maybe startles us, that maybe causes us to be uh, filled with some fear for some reason or another. For me, it's the fear of heights. If I reach a certain height, get out of a certain distance, and I feel the least bit insecure or unsafe, like I might fall, and a sense of fear overwhelms me and, and almost can reach the point of becoming almost a, a panic. For example, a couple of years ago, my wife Linda and I had the opportunity to take a helicopter ride over the island of Kauai, there in Hawaii. And that helicopter ride was what they called an open door ride, meaning there were no doors on the helicopter, it was wide open. And there I was sitting on the outside of the helicopter where the open door was. And when the helicopter started to take off and you know, begin the tour, I watched us lifting up from the ground. And as I kept looking down and we got higher and higher, I could feel this sense of fear welling up inside of me. And it was, well, hard to describe, but there it was. And I kept saying to myself, get a grip. Why do you have to be afraid? You're not going to fall out. You're buckled in. You're safe. You're there. What can happen? So why are you filled with fear? But I could feel it rising up inside of me. Fortunately, for my case, that sense of fear did subside and went away, and I was able to enjoy that helicopter ride, even looking out of the open door and down into the, the scenery below us. But still, why was there fear in the first place? Was it even warranted? Was it necessary for me to feel a sense of fear in my life at that, at that time? But what about doubts? Do you ever have any doubts about something? Do you have any doubt that our economy will get back on the track it was before the coronavirus uh, struck? Do you have any doubts that we will be able to get back to a sense of, of a normal life the way we were living before, again, the coronavirus started? Do you have any doubts or fears? Where do they come from? Why do we have them? If you were to break down the fears and doubts that we have in life and, and really analyze them, where would they be centered? On what would they be focused? Are not those fears and doubts that we have in life really focused on the things of this world and on our earthly daily life? So what's the answer to fear? What's the answer to doubt? Our Lord Jesus gives us the answer. And that answer is found in the glorious news of our Lord's resurrection. And with this knowledge, comes the encouragement that our Lord Jesus gives to us, and that is, stop doubting and believe. Our text is a familiar one. It is of our Lord's appearance to his disciples, and, and especially that a first appearance on the night of Easter when Jesus appeared to his disciples behind those locked doors, and, and the disciples were all there except Thomas. And of course, as you know, Thomas didn't believe what the others said. And we always characterize Thomas as being the, the doubting disciple. We speak of him as if he was the only one that doubted. And the others never doubted. Well, in some ways, yeah, that's kind of true. Why did Thomas doubt what his other disciples told him when they said, we have seen the Lord? Did Thomas really think that his fellow brothers in Christ would lie to him about this? 
Did he believe that his, his other disciples and friends were pulling a practical joke on him by telling him, hey, Thomas, we saw the Lord. Too bad you weren't here. Or what about the Lord himself? Did Thomas doubt his Lord's own word and promises when he told him and the other disciples before his death and resurrection that the Son of Man was going to be arrested and all these things were going to happen and he was going to be put to death, but on the third day he will be raised again? But still, Thomas doubted. He did not believe. But why? Before we jump all over Thomas and, and say that why did you doubt? You should never have doubted. You were the only one that did. Let's not forget about the other disciples. Where were they on that first Easter evening? What were they doing? They were behind locked doors for what reason? Fear. Fear of what might happen to them as what happened to their Lord. And is that not also a sense of doubt? Why were they not out celebrating and rejoicing and telling everyone the good news that the women had brought to them when they said, we have seen the Lord? They weren't, were they? They were behind that locked door. And is that also not a little bit of being a doubting Thomas? And what about you and me? Is there not in our own lives at times a little bit of the doubting Thomas in ourselves? If there weren't, then you and I would never question God and his will in our lives and the things that might happen to us in our life. Then we would never doubt the million and one promises that God has given to us in his word. We would never question them then you and I would never question the love and forgiveness that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we would never intentionally avoid the opportunity that God has given to us to worship and praise him. Then we wouldn't have a care or worry in this world. We would be at perfect peace knowing the love that God has for us as demonstrated to us through the sacrifice of his own son. But that's not always the case, is it? There are plenty of times in our own lives when that doubting Thomas rises up within us and we have our own fears and, and doubts. But do they need to be there? Do you and I need to fear and doubt? Does not our Lord's empty tomb shout out loudly, stop doubting and believe? The doubts that Thomas had were more than simply questions of uncertainty. They actually bordered on the line of unbelief. And, and maybe you could even say they were unbelief. When you look at the words in response that Thomas gave to his fellow disciples when they told him, we've seen the Lord. He said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were and, and put my hand into his side. I will not believe it. Thomas allowed his worldly mind to take over. He was looking at the events of Easter Day only through his earthly life, which you could say was disconnected from Christ's real mission and purpose of coming into this world. And that was to be the sacrifice for the sins of everyone. Of everyone. And that's why Thomas couldn't believe what his fellow brothers said to him when they said, we have seen the Lord, he is risen. Thomas didn't believe it. He was filled with doubt. But oh, for the grace of God. One week later, we find the disciples, and this time Thomas with them, again, where? Behind a locked door, still out of fear, but our Lord Jesus again appears in their midst. But this time, our Lord Jesus came specifically for Thomas. And he said to him, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. 
Stop doubting and believe. By the grace of God, Thomas' doubts and fears were, were swept away. His stubborn unbelief, if you want, and stubborn doubt, which kept him from believing the good news of Christ's resurrection, was shattered. His faith was restored. Jesus' pierced hands and side removed all those doubts and fears and replaced it with a firm trust and confidence so that Thomas could say, my Lord and my God. Thomas' fears and doubts vanished because Jesus lives. What happened in Thomas' life is no less true in our own lives. We can be just as doubtful and stubborn as Thomas was when we in life live our, our life on our own terms and disconnect ourselves from the hopes and the promises that we have through our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. And this we can do and find ourselves doing, especially when we look at life only in this world. We focus our, on only on the things of this world. And, and when it comes time for us to leave this world and have our earthly existence come to an end, then we're filled with fear and doubt because we forget and lost sight of the promise that God has given to us of the resurrection and the glory of eternal life that is ours. You see, our real comfort and hope is knowing that it is in the living promise and hope of the resurrection that we have through our risen Lord Jesus. You see, if we did not doubt that at times, there would never be any fear in our life. But thankfully, our Lord Jesus has removed those fears from us. He has removed them completely because he has given to us the promise. The very promise that he spoke to Martha there at the graveside of her brother Lazarus. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Because Jesus lives, we too live. And that is why God left the glory of his throne in heaven and took on flesh and blood. He did it so that he could come into this world and, and stretch out his hands, nailing them to the cross thus demonstrating the full extent of his love for, for you and for me and for everyone in this world. He did it so that his hands and side, the side especially that was pierced and blood and water flowed from it, would be the very source that would remove the stain of sin from our life. He did it so that the death-strong bands would be broken and you and I would be crowned with the glory of eternal life. With, when fear and doubt starts rising up within you, don't let them take over. Don't let them be the very thing that guides the way you think and, and live your life. But remember what Jesus told Thomas. He said, stop doubting and believe. Jesus has conquered all our, our fears and doubts and trampled them into the ground. He has shown to you and to me his hands, his feet, his side in the precious sacrament of the Lord's Supper, in the blessed sacrament of holy baptism, in the beauty and peace and comfort of his words of absolution, I forgive you all your sins. Because in these he announces to us the peace we have with God a peace that he has secured for you and for me through his life, death, and resurrection. So again, stop doubting and believe. Cast all your fears and doubts. Look to the one who has conquered them, that has conquered death and sin for you. Let go of yourself and the things of this world. Because so often you and I in life think that we need to hold on to ourselves or or the things of this world with one hand, even as we may reach out to the Lord with the other. But what does that do? It still leaves us hanging on to all the fears and doubts that we may have because of the things of this world. And when we do that, we're doubting God's promise. 
Rather, what we need to do, what you and I need to do, is remember to let go completely of ourselves, of the things of this world, and reach out to the Lord's promise that he has given to us. The promise that because he lives, we too shall live. You see, the hope that we have in Christ is a real living hope. It is a hope that has conquered sin and death because of what Christ has done for us. And that's why you and I can jump confidently into the arms of God's promises with a faith that is firmly rooted in our risen Savior. That's the hope we have. So what do you and I really have to fear doubt? Really nothing. Our sins are forgiven. They have been washed away in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He lives. He's our risen Lord. And because he lives, you and I too have the promise of the resurrection, the promise of eternal life. The things of this world, no matter what they might be, will not last. They're only temporary. And that includes the, the aches and the pains that we have in life, the, the sorrows and heartaches that we may have to endure in life in this world. They, they do not last. They will not last. And that even includes the things that we have to deal with right now with this coronavirus fear and pandemic that is striking this world. They will not last. But the love of God does. So why fear? Why doubt? Heed the encouraging words of our Lord Jesus and stop doubting and believe. Because he lives, so you and I also will live for all eternity. That's God's promise to us. And may that always be with you and sustain you each and every day of your life. To our risen Lord be the glory now and forever. Amen. Please stand and let us join and confess our faith in our Lord with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bow our heads in prayer. O oh Lord Jesus, our glorious and risen Savior, our hearts are filled with the joy and the peace of knowing that we have a living hope because you, O oh Lord, are our living Savior. You conquered and vanquished death with your resurrection, truly swallowing it up so that it has no hold on us any longer. Even though we in this life, in this world, will face death, we know that it is but for a moment it is a temporary thing because we know that the promise of the resurrection we have in you is real. And we look forward to that day when we will truly be raised up to life for all eternity. In the meantime, as we live our life in this world, may we do it to the glory of your name. And we therefore, in order to do that, we ask that you remove all fears and, and doubts from us. Help us to not just simply look to the things of this world and hold on to them, 
but rather that our hope and joy and peace is found in the love that you have for us, a love so great that you gave your life for us so that we might have life in you. O oh Lord, fill our hearts with the peace, the peace of knowing that we stand forgiven in your sight, the peace of knowing that our sins have been removed from us and that we are now clothed in your righteousness, the peace of knowing that what we have awaiting for us is the glory of heaven. And dear Lord, we ask that you keep us strong in our faith and love for you, and may we share that joy with others. We also come to you, dear Lord, on behalf of two of our members who this past week had to undergo emergency surgeries. We ask that you continue to be with Liz Wheeler and also Betty Gettner, both of them who underwent these emergency surgeries. We are so very thankful that the procedures that were performed were very successful. And now I ask, dear Lord, that you continue to be with them as they recover. We ask that you will give them the comfort and the assurance of your abiding love and lift up their spirits, giving to them the, the peace and the joy of your abiding love. We ask that no complications arise as a result of these surgeries, but that with each day you will grant healing to their bodies and restore them to complete health and strength. We're also very thankful, dear Lord, that you have answered all of our prayers on behalf of, of my daughter, Amanda, who was sick with the coronavirus. We are very thankful that you watched over her this past week and that she is doing so much better, that she is over the fever, but she still is suffering as uh, weakness and, and gets tired very easily because her body is still recovering from fighting that virus. We pray that you'll continue to bless her and, and restore her to complete health. We're also very thankful that her husband, Frank, and her son, Vincent, have not shown any signs of, of the virus in their own bodies. We pray that you will continue to protect them and keep them safe and in good health. And may that be the case for all of us, dear Lord, as well. And if any of us should suffer from this virus, we pray that you will grant healing to our bodies and restore all of us to uh, good health. And we look forward to that day, dear Lord, when we will be able to all be together in your house to go lift up our voices in praise and thanks to you for your goodness. And so, dear Lord, we pray this to the glory of your name. And now join together in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We'll conclude our service by singing our last hymn, hymn number 145, Jesus Live the Victories Won.
Again, good morning to all of you. I wish you God's blessings. Uh, it is, again, wonderful that we had the opportunity to worship with you, although virtually and online. I want to thank uh, our, those who have helped with our service, Jim Tice, Cynthia Nassas, and, and uh, Marsha Ackley. Uh, we appreciate them coming in and helping with our service. Um, if you've seen the movie Groundhog Day, uh, I know it's old, but it just seems like <laughs> we keep doing this over and over again. And I look forward to the day like in the end of the movie, our life gets back to normal and we will be all together here in God's house and giving praise and thanks to him. In the meantime, be safe. God's blessings to you. If you need pastoral care or wish to talk to one of us, Pastor Natsis and I are always available. Give us a call and we'd be more than happy to help you in whatever way possible. Remember, Jesus is our confidence. God's blessings to you. Thank you.